Hi, I'm wildlife conservation filmmaker Rick Andrews. And I have to tell you, American white pelicans are one of my favorite birds to film. I'm not sure why I find them so compelling. At times, they can look graceful and elegant, while at other times, they can look downright comical. All I know is I could spend all day down here, watching and learning from them. This is the Old Man River in Lethbridge. Downstream is a CPR high-level bridge, and across the river, on top of the coulee, is the University of Lethbridge. And this is the city weir. Designed to maintain a constant water supply for the city's water treatment plant, it's also a popular place for pelicans to come and feed, providing an opportunity to watch and film them at fairly close range. So stick around as we learn a little more about these amazing summer visitors. White pelicans begin arriving here from their coastal wintering grounds along the Gulf of Mexico in early April. Weighing between 5 and 8 kilos and having a wingspan of 3 meters or more, the white pelican is one of the world's largest birds. European fossil evidence indicates they've been around for at least 30 million years. And perhaps that's part of my fascination with them. They still look so prehistoric. After arriving here in southern Alberta, they disperse to many of our rivers and lakes, where they are a common sight throughout the summer months. Here on the Old Man River, they will now rest up for a few weeks, where they feed, relax, and preen. Rubbing their beaks on a gland at the base of their tail releases an oily substance that they then spread onto their feathers with their beaks or by using the back of their heads. With all of the aquatic activity they need to do now, it's important they keep their feathers as dry as possible. Day after day, small flocks continue to arrive at the river. And with so many pelicans here now, it's inevitable that turf squabbles will sometimes break out. At this time of year, the breeding adults are distinguishable by tufts of white feathers on the tops of their heads, along with a decorative bright orange bill plate. Of the eight species in the world today, the white pelican is the only one to grow this plate. As the spring runoff arrives, this part of the river now becomes too deep for them to fish, so the non-breeding adults will look for shallower fishing spots, while the breeding adults will also leave to fly to their nesting grounds a little further north. Their nesting colonies are often located on small islands in the middle of rivers or prairie lakes, and are sometimes shared with double-crested cormorants.
Shortly after establishing their colony, the pelicans begin courting to find a new mate. Once selected, the pair begin nest building. Nothing too elaborate, just a shallow scrape that they build together. The male will now guard his mate and defend the nest against any intruders. The female will then lay two eggs a couple of days apart, which both will take turns to incubate. After about 30 days, the eggs begin to hatch. The chicks are very small and weigh only about 100 grams. But they grow quickly and about three weeks of age begin walking and running while flapping their wings to maintain their balance. They are now old enough to begin joining creches for protection while the parents are away feeding. Unlike brown pelicans, white pelicans do not plunge dive. Instead, they forage from the surface. This lake is relatively shallow and therefore provides good opportunities for fishing. Although during the breeding season, most of the fishing will be done at night. At this age, the growing chicks need to be fed four times a day, so the parents have their work cut out for them. At about 26 days, the young pelicans now walk down to the water to begin swimming. By weeks 9 and 10, they are almost fully grown and develop their flight skills with short trips around the colony. After another week, the family will fly back to the Old Man River, where they will join the non-breeding adults that returned as the flow of the river decreased. In the coming weeks, their close family bond will dissolve as the juveniles gradually become more independent. They are identifiable by a grey patch on the top of their heads, along with a slightly mottled appearance on their wing feathers. During the post-breeding seasons, the bill plates of the breeding adults are now absent. Their bright orange-coloured bills and legs begin to fade and their white head plumes are replaced by short black feathers. Like the breeding colony lake, there are plenty of fish here. And while there may be larger fish in this river, most of what I found were only small minnows. They appear to be trapped by the weir and trying unsuccessfully to jump it. Unfortunately for the fish, this makes them easy pickings for the pelicans. Some of the juveniles will try fishing by themselves. Scooping the minnows up in their pouches, they strain the excess water before tilting their heads back to swallow. But other, more experienced adults prefer working together to herd the fish ahead of them in what sometimes looks like a finely choreographed ballet.
During the early part of the 20th century, white pelicans were often shot for sport. And during the middle part of that century, their numbers were further reduced by the widespread use of agricultural chemicals and the draining and pollution of wetland habitat. But since then, their numbers have grown by roughly 5% each year. And today, the Waterbird Conservation for the Americas estimates their global breeding population is now in excess of 120,000. The pelicans will now spend the rest of the summer here, maintaining their feathers and feeding to build up their fat reserves, both of which are essential to see them through their long fall migration south, a journey that will take several weeks to complete. Well, it's now early September, and there are definitely signs up and down the river that fall is in the air. We're starting to see a little color in the trees. The number of daylight hours are now reduced, and the nighttime temperatures are getting cooler. In fact, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning here now, and it's only plus 2 degrees Celsius. As you can see over my shoulder, there's a small flock of pelicans that are still here, but most have already left, leaving the river once more to the Canada geese. But that is a story for another day. Until then, I'm Rick Andrews. Thank you for watching. Thank you.